Hey, I'm Jake, and today I'm talking about Calvin and Hobbes. Okay, what I have here are original Calvin and Hobbes strips cut out of the newspaper when they were printed back in the 90s. These uh, were cut by my own hand as a kid, and uh, the reason being, I thought they were so cool. No one in the newspaper was doing comics like Bill Watterson, and Calvin and Hobbes just ignited my creative brain, and I wanted to draw like him, I wanted to make things like him, and so um, I cut them out because um, there was no other way to see these things again if I didn't save them. And I talk about that later on in the video, but um, I just wanted to go through these, show you why Bill Watterson um, is so good. His artistry, his voice, um, just the little details that, that uh, get me all fired up when I look at these things. I wanna share all that with you in this video today. So let's get right down to it. All right, before we get into the, the strips that I cut out from the, the newspapers back in the day, I wanna talk about what the, I guess the, the, the state of Sunday newspaper strips were at the time um, before those, I think, I don't wanna say revolutionary, but before Bill Watterson kind of changed the format to, to do something more artistic and more expressive. What we have here, this is from the, um, the authority, no, the complete Calvin and Hobbes, these massive books. And if you don't have these things, they're excellent. Uh, they collect everything, everything that has been in print uh, with Calvin and Hobbes. But I wanted to show out what, show you what um, a typical layout for a Sunday strip was. It always had this um, title card thing, and it was usually a two, uh, it was usually a two-panel gag. So we would see Calvin, we would see, you know, something for this in this case Hobbes trailing behind him, and then it would be usually a small panel, thicker panel, or longer panels, and then a row of a small panel, and whether they were long, uh, you know, long panels or, or broken into smaller panels, it was usually um, something that, that took up this full space here. And the reason for that is that these had to be designed this way. This is like a, a template for all comic strips that were gonna be in Sunday papers because these things would be rearranged depending on the space available in the newspaper. And so sometimes this would be completely eliminated. So this beginning gag didn't need, the whole gag didn't need to rest on what was being told in this first, um, this these first two panels. It's usually just a throwaway. And then the real comic strip would start here because some panels would just do this section, or some newspapers would just do these two sections. And then some would squish the whole thing and would start with um, start with these two panels, turn these two panels into a, uh, an, a, a second row, and then these two panels would be a third row. So it would be thinner and taller and take up three rows. Um, and so it was just, there's a lot of constraints. I think Bill Watterson did great trying to work within these constraints. You can see uh, a few others here. Let me see if there's a lot of the dailies here, but let's see if we can find another Sunday. So yeah, again, same thing, throwaway gag. Um, this would be, you know, the, the, this would be, these three panels here would be the top row. These three panels would be the second row and then these would be the last two rows, something like that. Um, but Watterson, was like this, um, you know, aficionado of the history of comics. And it used to be that Sunday comics took up an entire, you know, one strip would take up an entire page. If you look at like the old Nemo strips, um, I'm going to grab my little Nemo book here. If you've seen this thing, um, this would be an entire page of the newspaper, you know, it's just beautiful. And you had Gasoline Alley that would take up another page and it would be, it was just this fantastic, you know, way to read comics on the Sundays. And then 
over the years they would get watered down and watered down and and Watterson wanting to come back to you know the glory days I guess wanted to experiment more and try things so so this was his last strip this happened in April this was April 28th 1991 and not long after that he goes on sabbatical um, and he left comics uh, doing any sort of comics work publicly until February 1992 so it was almost almost a year and when he came back he started doing these large full like half page comic strips and uh, and he was just exploring and doing all kinds of things with the the, the shapes of the panel because um, because he could he could he had the space to do it and you know you can read up on the details of it of how he got the that deal I mean if you're the most successful and popular comic strip in newspapers and people are selling newspapers because of your comic strip you can kind of you have a little bit of leverage there with the newspapers and so he said I want a half a page and I want to be able to do whatever I, I wanted to be able to do whatever I want in that half page and so this is him now exploring and flexing his muscles and trying things and you see him you know if you look at the old crazy cat uh, comic strips from 100 years ago they have these round panels and these overlapping things and he's doing that there and I think it's cool too you can see here um, he's got a one a two a three um, a four a five he's numbering the panels so that people don't get lost in these things he's kind of training us on how to how to do it um, and it was about this time that I started to cut these things out of the newspaper you could see here this is the reproduction of it and here this is the original of that one and the reason I love these so much is is you've got all the imperfections in printing on newsprint and the, the dingy ink that they used and how it bleeds into the paper and things are offset a little bit it just is it just looks nicer I wish reproductions could capture this because it looks a little too crisp in the reproductions but my newspaper the Mesa Tribune in Arizona sort of called his bluff and instead of printing it half half size of the of the whole paper they shrunk it to almost a quarter of a paper and then ran a strip vertically along next to it so that was a little frustrating but I still thought it was cool and these were the perfect size for like a 13 year old kid to trim out of the newspaper and like keep it in his folder and take to school and study it because you know at that time you wouldn't be able to uh, in, unless you saved these there's no way to see these again unless you know they, there wasn't an internet to go look these strips up a book would come out every Christmas I think or, or summer and I would have to wait until my birthday or Christmas to get a new Calvin Hobbes book so I collected these so I could keep looking at them and study them and, and draw from them and this is everything I know about almost everything I know about drawing dinosaurs I learned from this comic strip this one right here just blew me away and kind of changed everything for me and, and showed me how to use blacks and to use hatching and use thick contour lines um, you know this is just such a great a great style um, you can see here I think these I don't know if these are in order or not um, let's see this would be 1992 here we are in 1993 um, this is 1993 as well I think they're I think they're close in order I don't know but um, again just look at this horizontal layout and how he is guiding your eye where it needs to go so we have this first panel and instead of you reading this and going down to these panels he overlaps this panel and your eyes just direct it over here so you read this whole top line first boom 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 then you read this panel then this panel you come over here and you finish it out really well done okay spaceman spiff <laughs> I just love the way he draws um, the environments and the rocks and like these cool little details here it was like retro futurism like 
These sort of designs you would see in an old Buck Rogers comic, but with this sort of shading happening here, combined with like the goofy comicness of it, it just, my brain was just like, whoa, blown away by this stuff. Um, and it's, it's influenced me ever since. This strip was one of my favorites where Calvin, uh, I mean, I still come back to this simple shape for like a design solution for robots. Um, just just a, a simple, you know, round dome thing, sort of like an R2-D2 thing happening here. Um, I love this background here. You know, the, the fact that we're, the, the POV is looking down on um, on a yard. You don't, you rarely get this in the news, in the newspaper comic strips. Everything's very much told from this perspective. And then on Sundays he would come in, he would show us the world that they're living in. Um, very much a, a Jetsons type of thing happening here. This is really one of my most favorite uh, Calvin Hobbes comic strips. It's just a masterpiece. I think it's one of his best. Um, this is just a nice sequential animated intro here. Uh, darkness, then light, then floating out the window. And then we have this spotlight shining on the house and the way that this tree, like both the trees go from light to dark, like the shadows cutting into them. Uh, it's just, it's, it's almost like it's, it's painted on there, like he's painting with ink. And then for the design of these things, I love this. This was just the greatest thing for me to see this um, engine brain that they stick inside the robot of Calvin. Um, and, and anytime I'm doing robot brains, I always think of this, I always come back to that. Same with these like alien head designs too, just good stuff. It's a funny gag as well. So the robot then goes and uh, throws away the math books, steals the cookies, um, you know, smashes things in the house. And of course the mom doesn't believe his story and he goes back He's grounded and he stares up at the stars, you know, frustrated. Um, another good one showing, um, you know, a, a, an alternate reality of what, how things could be. Again, you could see just panels going from normal to now this one's got a, a bright red border because he, he's, he's trying to emphasize, you know, the shock of seeing the mom as a puppet. Um, and then we have this like long horizontal purple um, border here to like define that we're really in another world as opposed to like the, the, the typical, um, typical world of the strip. This kind of stuff, gradients and like the layered um, levels of, of purples to browns was also just great to see in the newspaper because everything was usually like really flat, bright colors. And to see something so well rendered like this, where you've got this dark gradient to light here and the, the, the gradient coming up that way, um, that's just really, really well done. Um, um, I don't know, I don't know much about how these things were colored, whether he, um, you know, had swatches and, and expressed, you know, expressed, I, I want the gradient to start here and go there, or whether it was watercolor. I went to the Calvin and Hobbes um, exhibit uh, at the Cartoon Library in, in Ohio, and I remember seeing something about the coloring, but I didn't, it was seven or eight years ago. I wish I would have paid better attention to that part. I was so, you know, into looking at all the inking. Um, this is just a beautifully rendered panel as well, how uh, we've got the head silhouetted, head's completely in shadow. You'd think you'd want to like add all the detail to the head here, but it's in shadow to kind of give this area more light and, uh, and to really block this thing. And it just implies too, like this is, a, this is a predator about to pounce and just have those little red eye through all the shadow. And then we get to see all the detail here of the of the face. And you can see his dinosaurs getting, you know, just 
10 times better from the, the first, this isn't the first dinosaur, but this is like one of the first really realistic dinosaurs we see in Calvin and Hobbes. Um, and this is even, you know, you could tell this, that Watterson was, was studying, um, uh, you know, museum, sort of museum re renderings or, or what's it called? Um, zoological illustration, things like that. Again, look at this beautiful gradient. Same with here, beautiful wide panel of, of this uh, almost tropical ocean type of thing. I guess it wouldn't be tropical, but it's like just this, this beautiful ocean. <laughs> That's such a great design too, like tentacled monsters. Um, to, to have no border around a panel too was something kind of unique that you didn't see much in the newspaper strips back in the 90s. That was really cool to see. It's just very artistic. Um, I always love the design of this little alien too. Such a great, great little guy. And this is cool too. If you want, you know, if you're doing a comic strip or any sort of comic page to have all the panels be roughly the exact same size, it gets your eye into a cadence where you're just boom, 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 boom. None of them are more important than the other ones. So it's like a way to just kind of work your way through and say like, these intervals are really close. These time intervals are really close to one another. Um, a lot of fun there. This one too, like pulling an octopus out of a, out of a fridge to have some of the tentacles dang dangling down and some of them like streaming out. You, just the way that that is done there, it's like, and, and have it like folding over her hand her hand, it, it just implies that this is a gushy, weighted object. Uh, really well done. You know, I, before I saw this, I didn't think, A, the, the fact that he's doing a mom making dinner with octopus and weed killer and paint and such a good gag, but, but to do, he didn't have to go this good with the design of the octopus but he did it anyway, and that's why he's the greatest. And again, another excellent use of color as a, as a part of a gag. Beautiful rendered um, rock formations. Look at that thick line. Look how thick that is. I'm sometimes afraid to go that thick with my inking, but not Watterson. I learned, one of the big things I learned about like inking from him is anything that's not in the foreground you can just put straight in black shadow in the background. And it, it makes everything in the foreground read really better, especially on character designs. This one was cool. I actually come back to this illustration all the time when I'm trying to figure out how to do like crowd scenes and how do you, um, you know, how do you illustrate a city without having to draw the entire city? So he just kind of eliminates some of this background stuff which when you're looking at it, you know, to, in real life, you don't pay attention to all the little details because you're paying attention to things moving in the foreground. And, and he gets away with that because he puts all these like important elements in front. Another great dinosaur leveling up on his dinosaur and drawings to draw a dinosaur head from this angle. We hadn't really seen something from that angle before in his in his artwork and uh, it's just cool to see the dimensions here you know this is the 90s so jurassic park is is a big deal um, so I'm, I'm guessing that somewhat influenced this a little bit there and we got some apollo uh, action this is let's we'll call it apollo 18 the calvin mission <laughs> uh again too like how realistic, I love this um, balance of cartoony and realistic. And Watterson had a background in, um, in uh, newspaper, like political cartoons, which always do that balance great of realistic drawing with, with cartoony. This is his take on like 90s comics, 
you know, I could feel my spine shatter. It hurt a lot. And uh, we see the spine like busting. Um, an, a, an amazing amount of um, violence for a Sunday newspaper strip. I'm amazed they got away with that. But I guess when you're Bill Watterson, you can get away with doing something like that. I also like too how this printed off just a little bit. You wouldn't get this in a reproduction now, you know, in the book that you would get from, uh, you know, Barnes and Noble now, whatever the latest Calvin Hobbes reprint is. I just like seeing this kind of stuff in these original Sunday strips. It, it gives it so much character. Um, again, I mean, they're, they're all just good stuff. I don't know what else to say about this other than um, it's, it's just so fun. Oh, maybe this is the greatest strip he's, he's ever done. Maybe this is it. Um, first, these things are beautifully rendered. Um, we get to see them from all different angles. So he's flexing his dinosaur drawing muscles there. Um, but the sheer creativity of Tyrannosaurs and F-14s, like when I saw this as a junior high kid and I looked at this and I was like, what? like right then these neurons, these neural connections in my brain just went and it was always look for the unexpected and what could you combine that like go well together but you would never think to put together. So a T-Rex in an F-14 is like, you know, anytime I sit down to draw something or create something, I'm always thinking, what can I do that is in the same spirit as this? Is it, you know, it, what's unexpected? What's something no one's thought of, but in hindsight, just works so beautifully together. So thank you, Bill Watterson, for this comic strip. This is 1995. We're getting to the end of his, um, you know, of his reign as a, as as greatest comic artist in the newspaper. He retired this year uh, of 1995. Um, beautiful background. Kind of got this um, Batman, uh, Adam West, you know, vibe from the 60s show. Just the shadow that's happening in there. It's just this dramatic lighting that you don't expect from. This is what comic strips are in the newspaper. And then to go to this and see all this shadows and and to, to have things obscured by blackness is like really just masterful. Um, is this the last dinosaur he drew? I think it might be. Again, beautiful, just to stick a dinosaur in a kitchen. It's more of that um, what's unexpected, but, but it's just beautifully done. This one's good too. <laughs> it's hard to draw like a kid and I think he nails it. It's just such a creative thing to like show the, 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 the paper, you know. This is from 1992, so this is an earlier, earlier dinosaur drawing, Deinonychus. Another beautiful dinosaur one. I cut out, I didn't cut out all of them. I just cut out the ones that I thought were cool that I wanted to like reproduce, try to learn from. Um, I think, I think we're it. This one too, just the fact that you have this nice establishing shot that didn't have to be this good, but he puts so much detail and, and thought into this to have the characters so tiny. Um, to kind of show scale and everything. Really well done. Um, and I love this one too. This is another good one. I mean, they're all good, but this this one really does stand out. And this is, is a typical day for a kid at school. They're herded, their brains are filled, you know, maybe they're overflowing with what they think is mush, and maybe it is mush, depending on who's teaching it. Um, they're on a treadmill of, of sorts, a hamster wheel. They feel like they have to work. They feel like they have to be a robot, you know, repeat. By the end of the day, a kid is just, and you know, if you have kids going to school, and if you remember school, it's just, it's a lot of this, this kind of stuff. At the very end, like a fish out of water gasping for air. And then, boy, I'm glad to see you, Hobbs. Another typical school day. It's This is like, it encapsulates like what, Calvin Hobbes is all about. It's a kid trying to make his way through the world as best as he can and then 
um, you know, trying to live life on his own terms when he has the freedom to do so. And uh, I guess if there's anything you can pull from these Calvin Hobbes strips, I hope it's I hope it's that. All right, thanks for watching this video. Um, I know Bill Watterson isn't some hidden gem that nobody's heard of. Like, uh, it's essentially like talking about <laughs> Michael Jordan with basketball. I just wanted to share uh, Calvin and Hobbes and Bill Watterson, kind of let you see it through my eyes and, and, and experience the way I experienced them. Not as only as a kid, uh, but you know, in the 90s, but as um, you know, a, a professional artist adult and how I still view it and still learn from it and still think about it. Um, yeah, so hopefully, uh, you know, you, you got some takeaways from this and, and if there's anything you want to share about Bill Watterson, I'd love to hear it in the comments. You guys are always so great about continuing the discussion in the comments and I, I love that and I try to respond to things as best as I can. Uh, last video I talked about the Antler Boy Kickstarter. The Antler Boy is an anthology that I, I uh, published back in 2012 and it's since gone out of print and I'm reprinting a new edition of it. It's all the same stories. It's got a new cover. There's a few things that are remastered in it. Um, and so if you never got a copy earlier on, this is your chance to get a copy. I'm not kickstarting it though. I decided I'm just gonna do, um, I'm just gonna pay for the printing out of pocket and um, and just do either a pre-order or just put them in my shop and hope that um, I can recoup those costs and make a little money off of this book and, and share something with, um, with, you know, share something that I've created with people. I think they're great stories I always get feedback at how much people love it. They love reading it with their kids. And, and I'm sad when people say, it's just, you know, where can I get a copy of this? And I'm not able to give them one. So this is really why you know, I'm coming back to, to print this book. Um, I think that's it. Lastly too, um, thanks to the people who signed up to my newsletter uh, last video. I just wanna uh, remind you, this is a great way to get a weekly dose of inspiration, my newsletter. I share, you know, one thing that I've worked on that week, but the rest of it, it's five, it's usually five cool things. Um, and the first one is usually, here's something that I worked on this week, uh, but then thing number two, three, four, and five are just cool stuff that I found on the internet um, or that I've experienced in real life or a, a cool book that I've got. And it's me just sharing that with you. So if you feel like you need some curated inspiration weekly, sign up for the newsletter. I think you'll like it. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. See you later.